Yes, sir. We'll start. Okay, uh, we will start. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we have uh, the last session: uh, a digital transformation and artificial intelligence by Dr. Sajan Matthew, sir, professor and registrar, evaluation and exam, examination and evaluation, Alliance University, <coughs> Bengaluru. So, yeah, it is my privilege to welcome uh, Professor Sajan Matthew, Registrar Examination and Evaluation, Alliance University, Bangalore, for accepting our invitation to deliver the lecture on digital transformation and artificial intelligence in five days online faculty development program. Sir, I welcome you on behalf of the Department of Commerce and my own behalf. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Before going to the discussion, just I'll give a small, a brief discussion about the digital transformation and artificial intelligence. Digital transformation is one of the most critical drivers on how how companies will continue to deliver. Sir, please. Yeah. Yeah. Not from my end, sir. <laughs> no, 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 I got it. Okay. Uh, digital transformation is one of the most critical drivers on uh, how the companies will going to deliver value to the customers in highly competitive and ever-changing business environment. Artificial intelligence has been uh, recognized as a one of the central enablers of uh, digital transformation in the several industries. The transformation processes seeks to leverage the digital technologies to create or modify the customer experiences and culture. And business process, uh, thus beating customer changing needs in the market. It can also help the companies to become more innovative, more flexible, and more adaptive than ever. To promise of speed, ease, and cost optimization while simplifying complex processes and systems, places, of artificial intelligence is one of the most significant digital transformation driver. So now, uh, I mean, I'll extend. Yeah. Uh, I'll extend the further uh, deliberation uh, by uh, Professor Sajan Matthew on topic in a simple way, sir. Yeah. Before going to that, just I, our uh, uh, assistant professor. Uh, Dr. Shashidhar, okay. I will going to introduce you, sir. So, Thank Shashidhar. You. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce today's resource person, Dr. Sajan Matthew, sir, Professor Alliance Business Academy, Bangalore. Dr. Sajan Matthew, sir, is a trainer, teacher, and consultant in the field of information system, e-business, and blockchain. Dr. Matthew, sir, graduated in engineering and followed this with a master's degree in business administration, software marketing, MPhil, and a doctorate in e-learning. Dr. Matthew's industrial strengths include working in reputed Indian corporations such as Apollo Tires Limited, Simplex Solutions, during which time he was associated with many national and international projects. Dr. Matthew has authored four books in the areas of system analysis and design, database management system, software engineering, computer technology, and programming. These are now prescribed as textbooks in various Indian and international universities, including the Queen's University, Britain, UK. Dr. Matthews currently working on books in the fields of business information systems and blockchains. Dr. Matthews' publications have featured in various national and international conferences. Sir has also designed and conducted several training programs for leading professional bodies, corporations, and institutions. He currently works as the Registrar Examination and Evaluation Alliance University, Bangalore. With this brief introduction, and artificial intelligence. I hope this session will be precious to all of us. Thank you once again for all of you for the opportunity. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind introduction, sir.
this is uh, this is going to be see way uh, for us. Uh, we will have uh, we you can put your questions in between i am open for questions in between the sessions this one two hours close to two hours we will make good idea about what is ai not just what is ai how ai is helping business transform or what is digital transformation now and artificial intelligence is helping that uh, you may not have any computing background or any background with respect to technology that is all fine enough i am open for questions at every stage i wish all of you can interact with me continuously then it makes much more easy for me to put the thoughts up you don't have to be having any background on those particular subjects to take it forward correct we will start uh, this is a pretty long session and this uh, pretty long sessions in terms of i will make sure it is interactive you can i, I hope uh, if at all you have any questions you can straight away unmute yourself and start asking this questions okay i hope we will start Uh, before starting uh, i hope all of you can see these slides very clearly digital transformations and yeah i listen listen to this leading into the future what you need to know today correct this is very important uh, when you create your as faculty i know most all of you are faculties each one of you should know what is happening today leading into future what you need to know today to design the systems what is that you should teach the universities across the globe is finding it very difficult to match with the current developments which is happening with respect to technology that is what we will primarily focus what is this digital transformation uh, are you with me i hope all of you are following it this and uh, this is my agenda for the day today's business what is the changes in business the industrial revolution the exponential organizations i will go very slowly what is happening in today's business the changes in business the industrial revolution exponential organizations are changing and exponentially changing there is a digital disruption which is happening and then there is this digital transformation so we will look at some use cases and what should you do as faculties what should you do to make sure what you teach is relevant any questions that is the agenda in between i am open to change it based on the questions which comes into the discussions i hope you will have a wonderful time two hours with me correct uh, this uh, we will start to start with the future is no longer just an extension of the present that internally we have to understand this what is the future of business is no longer the extension of the past or an extension of the present it is totally different and how different is it wait and watch i will explain that correct how different it is i don't know i am am i good enough to explain that i i strongly feel i can do that but it is beyond anyone's imagination uh, if you can see that you see drones delivering you can see the images at the background drones are delivering pizzas drones are delivering everything that is transformation and there is a huge transformation which is happening in business everywhere we will start before starting correct i've just started before starting i just want to put some components why what is ai i'm not going to talk about ai you have enough sessions on ai correct i am putting one slide to give you and overview of information if you can see this data you process it you get information knowledge intelligence why is everybody talking about intelligence artificial intelligence now is simply because of the volume of the data which is collected by technological devices iot big data cloud lot of devices collecting lot of this data and then they are able to convert it into intelligence are you with me i hope all of you are following it correct that's a simple reason one major reason is the volume of the data which is captured by the systems are exponentially improving and the second reason is the power of computing is also exponentially improving that is why ai is so powerful 
Correct. What am I saying? I am simply saying the importance of information. Lot of the first generation systems, they can basically collect this data, convert it into information, knowledge, and intelligence. And if if you can take this data to convert it into understand the relationship, make it into information, understand the pattern, make it into knowledge, then you, you almost you are almost reaching at the right place. And if you can basically take this knowledge, understand the, the detailed principle behind it, you can come to intelligence or wisdom. And nowadays, computing systems, softwares are there which can collect this data and convert it into intelligence. And there are a lot of software systems. There are a lot of computing hardware which is making this possible. That is why the subject has a lot of relevance. I hope everybody is clear. The two reasons, correct, you can use your chatbot to put your questions. The two primary reasons why AI is so powerful is because of the volume of the data which is generated by the systems, by the, the new technology devices, and the power of computation makes AI very much possible. Correct. Uh, before going in, you can see, I'm just showing you two images. This is taken from New York City. 1900 can you see in this can you see what is happening in this image anyone if you can basically look at this image and say use your chatbots to respond what, what can you see in this image anyone if you can put it over you can unmute yourself and speak also procession yeah procession yeah it's a big procession it's a little more deeper it's a big it's a easter day procession in fact which is happening Easter Day morning, which happens in every, almost in most of these countries where the Christians are pretty good. Something more. In this procession, more there is some, carriages. Yeah, you can see horses, horse carriages everywhere. There is only one car which is highlighted here, 1900. L look at it, just one car there, correct? And the rest of them are basically horses and horse carriages. And I'm just moving on. One second. You can see after 13 years, what is the difference which you see here? Cars carriages are replaced. Horse carriages yeah. are replaced by the cars. All the horse carriages are replaced by cars. There is just one horse in this image. That's just permission. after 13 years, all the horses being replaced by cars. Only. cars. Internal combustion engines, automobiles started to come into the roads of US. New York City was flooded with cars. That happened, this took just 13 years. It took many more years for these technologies to come to our country, but just 13 years, all the horses was replaced by cars. Almost, this is almost the initial part of the industrial revolution. Something similar is happening right now. It is much, aggressive than this and that is what i i have to explain and that that is why we each as faculties each one of you should bet on this subject in fact artificial intelligence i strongly feel artificial intelligence should be 30 percentage of any subject whether it is any fun any subjects in in fact if it is marketing finance hr operations 20 30 percentage of the content should be based on the technology components and why why is that why is that relevant i will explain in this one and a half hours uh, i hope all of you know what is fourth industrial revolutions i'm not going very deep into it the first industrial revolutions you know the water steam powered vehicle the second one electricity came in third industrial revolutions the pc revolutions correct the late basically and then comes the fourth industrial revolution this is exponential what what is where is AI? AI we, we, we've been talking about AI for the last something like 30, 40 years. But with the fourth industrial revolution, mobile, cloud, connected devices, artificial intelligence, blockchain, product, software as a service, all this is started to come into business. And that is where the productivity of the business improved. You are right now, 2020, you are almost 2020, 2021 is the stage in which. This exponentially, the curve is basically changing. You are here, in fact. Can you see this? 
This is the previous revolution, PC, internet, social media platforms. You are almost here. What is happening right now? A set of new technologies coming into business and changing every functions of business. Not just every functions of business, every functions in daily life has to be changed. Correct? That, that's the power of AI. That is the power of IoT, robotics, blockchain, quantum computing. By the end of this one, one and a half hours, I strongly feel each one of you should be able to correlate this. I am open for questions. If you have questions, you can put it across. Huh? This, this is 2020-2021. Yeah. Yeah, you, one of you can speak. Yeah. Okay. If you have any questions, please write. Otherwise, you can mute it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can mute yourself. We will basically move on. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. No problem. We will basically move on. Uh, uh, what am I saying? I am saying 2020. So far, we have been saying, hearing about this technology. This technology started to give mileage into business is right now. That is why you look at the share price of Amazon, correct? Tesla, correct? All this Microsoft. Or you take our Indian companies like Naukari, InfoEdge, or Indian IT companies like TCS, Vipro, etc. They started to exponentially grow of late. Okay. That, it is happening in a huge manner. And this is the exponential organization. So, so far, we have seen linear growth. Now you are entering into an exponential age. And there is a strong disruption which is happening. And this is the growth factor. That is why every business, every sector, whether it is healthcare, whether this is governments, all of them try to capitalize on this exponential technologies. And that is where this disruption is happening. Who is able to fill this? This, this, is, this is the standard game plan. Everyone who is able to exploit this gap is going to win. So, see, what is linear? What is exponential? I know as faculties, we know this. I'm just going a little more deeper. We are here. As faculties, we are here. The subject is, we have been teaching like this, incrementally changing our subjects year after year. Now, I'm not saying about my university. I sit with the boards of different universities. Yeah, I can see someone who is able to think exponentially is radically revamping the curriculums and putting AI, big transformation, digital transformations like 20 to 30 percentage of the curriculum. Whether this is in B school or even in medicine, even in medicine, I'm saying, judicial system, the tech rules, that is the extent at which technology is changing. Look at the hospitals, look at a surgery room, how much is the software basically deciding how to cut? That is the extent. That, that is the extent at which the business is changing. Uh, and this is chaos. In fact, sometimes it can be. See, for Tesla, it is entertainment. It, they are redesigned. For InfoEdge, Naukri, TCS, all these IT companies, they are capitalizing on. I'm simply saying this is, I, I've, been I've been working for quite some time. I've been saying this continuously. Right now, if you cannot capitalize on this wave, you are lost. And as a university is a, the universities who is not able to capitalize it will be a loser. And I should congratulate Dangre University for taking this initiative. Now, look at this. AI is a major part of this curriculum. Okay, listen. We, we will move on. I will first explain the linear and the exponential in terms of numbers. Linear, one, if you take a stride one meter, 30 linear steps, you are ahead by 30 meters. I hope you are clear. 30 meters, you are in front. Whereas exponential, with one meter stride, 30 exponential table steps will take you 26 trips around the world. That means 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, like that, 32 steps, 26 times around the world. That is exponential. And that is the exponential factor. Getting this right. Listen here, time, progress. And if you think linear, you are almost dead and dying. I hope you are getting it. 
you are almost dead and dying so you cannot you cannot catch up and this is an exponential world where you actually end up is almost here look at the tools which is there to teach the subjects n number of technology tools how how should pricing be done what should be the stock price of each of the products everything is decided by the algos the algo trading is the future uh, to make money in stock market is also so difficult why because you are betting against an artificial intelligent system that's the world which you are entering in you have see for a faculty i doubt whether my job will be there after a few years simply because the best of the machine sofia can teach in different languages one to one n number of times that's the, we have to bet against that that is the world which you are entering in i hope you have understood the exponential growth which this technologies like iot big data cloud machine learning artificial intelligence etc is bringing yeah into the systems if there is questions you can i am ready to answer this if there is any questions you can put it across or you can put it in the chat also okay we will move on are you clear i hope all of you are clear on what my foundation is i am simply saying that there is an exponential change which is happening and be ready to take on those changes especially to the faculties who have just joined this job correct something who is in 30s and in the early 40s or late 20s look at them will this job stay you look at the future of the jobs it's radical it is changing every minute i hope you are clear we will move on i hope there is no questions we will move on okay next okay listen i'm just removing this chat look at the this this is a report which uh, some of the slides i have pulled it from the various consulting agencies some of them i have created it this is the world stock of data this is from bcg boston consulting group correct bcg itself is a thumb rule in fact to teach a lot of subjects in fact look look yeah okay all of you unmute yourself we will basically take the questions later once again can you see this the world stock of data at one stage in 2000 you see 90 percentage of the data was in physical format analog format only 10 percentage that is almost like 20 years back only 10 percentage of the data was in digital format look at what is happening right now 98 percentage of the organization's data is in digital format and is interconnected that means it is connected it is a, coming from an iot device the chair which i am sitting right now is connected to further light they know how am i sitting where am i moving look at your mobile phones they collect all this data iot devices that's the power and th that is radically changing and that change is to be capitalized by the business and if the business is not able to capitalize on this they basically lost it i am not going into the details of each of this question so you see what is a byte kilobyte you can see that huge volume of data big data 2021 one minute one minute internet minutes you can see what is happening 500 hours of youtube content getting uploaded look at the number of downloads of apps all this is happening look at echo amazon is camp look at every minute you are putting a question back to echo alexa it is learning by itself it is being intelligent that shows what is happening data is the new oil and artificial intelligence is the new electricity and and th there is a big rush which is happening right now are you with me data is the new oil at one stage the oil companies were so rich and artificial intelligence is sitting on top of this data analyzing the data, data converting this data into intelligence and giving it to decision makers to decide in fact the business is taking decision by itself by using the data which is stored in their warehouses the store in their cloud that is the world which you are entering i will give you examples sir that's the business world if we cannot capitalize on this data we lost the race 
and that is why why is baiju's valued at most valued at tech company why is it because they know what are the students learning what is he interested in which are the subjects to be floated etc stanford or berkeley does it baiju's who is a kid who basically started this few years back is able to capture that that's the value of the data data is the new oil artificial intelligence is the new electricity and that's the thumb roll of the discussions I'm just getting few questions so yeah listen okay listen and just one second i'm just moving on with any questions yeah okay listen any questions yeah we will move on today iot i'm just putting some terms here internet of things for artificial intelligence to work internet of things if you access the background that's almost like the base today network everything is interconnected iot devices collecting data from trains vehicles your cameras the way in which i sit i the chair the shower which you use the cameras everywhere internet of things is almost like the central nervous system it acts as the nervous system in fact what we are seeing is three eras of digital transformations we see digitization digitalization and digital transformation i will come to this three terms using ai what we are seeing is a digital transformation transforming every functions of business and daily life digitization is just converting paper based systems into digital formats what is digitalizing digitalization using some digital technologies to change the business model you say for example instead of paper based systems you take attendance online creating the certificates as it is basically created online some process they you optimize it using digitalization what is digital transformation applying the technologies what are these technologies iot big data cloud blockchain machine learning all this to change all the aspects of the business that is what is happening and digital transformation is happening everywhere and this is happening everywhere and even in education it is radically changing i will give you some examples correct i will show you a small example to show how this digital transformation artificial intelligence is applied inside a classrooms i hope uh, all of you can see me i am sharing my screen so my screens uh, screens are shared i'm just taking a classroom in china i hope the audio is will also be clear with the students china is using artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence look at a classroom in china i'm just showing a small clip i hope if the audios are not clear or if it is not audible you have to tell me i'm just playing a small clip sir is it video yeah one second can you hear okay. yes sir yeah yeah this is happening in china they, what are the students doing they, they are asked to basically wear a headband correct sir no, is, not sir it's not audible you can't hear the video yeah. can you hear the video when i am playing the video can you hear that yes, the sound was very small Okay, no. one second. One second. Huh? 
it is not audible sir okay oh okay one second no sir okay one second let me check it out one second just let give me some minute i'll just change. Can you hear the sound now? But schools say it wasn't hard for them getting parental consent to enroll kids yes, into yes, what is sir. one of the okay. world's largest experiments in AI education. A program that's supposed to boost students' grades while also feeding powerful algorithms. The government has poured billions of dollars into the project, bringing together tech giants, startups and schools. We got exclusive access to a primary school a few hours outside of Shanghai. To see firsthand how AI tech is being used in the classroom. For this fifth grade class, the day begins with putting on a brain wave sensing gadget. Students then practice meditating. The device is made in China and has three electrodes, two behind the ears and one on the forehead. These sensors pick up electrical signals sent by neurons in the brain. The neural data is then sent in real time to the teacher's computer. So while students are solving math problems, a teacher can quickly find out who's paying attention and who's not. Look at what is happening inside a classroom. The teacher knows when they are pro solving the problem, how is the brain working, how is this graph basically moving. That is the extent at which data is collected from the student, from the brains of the student real time. Look at how the evaluation systems of the university will have to change. Right now, they are putting a band with the three electrodes, which is usually capturing the data. That is the extent at which the data is basically captured. Listen to the rest of the video. I hope all of you can hear. A report is then generated that shows how well the class was paying attention. It even details each student's concentration level at 10 minute intervals. It's then sent to a chat group for parents. The reports are detailed. But whether these devices really work and what they exactly measure isn't as clear. We were curious if the headbands could actually measure concentration, so one of our reporters tried on the device. This is a new technology with still fairly little research behind it. Theodore Zanto is a neuroscientist at the University of California, San Francisco. He was surprised to learn that this tech, called electroencephalography, also known as EEG, is being used in the classroom on but children. It's usually used by doctors in hospitals and labs. Yeah, can you hear and see the videos? So video is not visible, we can uh, listen to the audio. Oh, you can't see the video, yeah? Yeah. No, yeah. Right. yeah. no video. Okay, no, not the slide, I am playing a video, in fact. No, sir, no, video is not playing, sir. Okay, one second. I'm just uh, changing the format and then playing it. Yeah. One second. Can you, oh, one second. EEG is very susceptible to Can our you see the video now? And so yes, if you are itching. Did you see the video now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you see the video? Now, I'm just, uh, okay. One second. I'm just playing it a little bit. Okay. Can you, I'm continuing. Can you see the video now? The device is made in China and has three electrodes, two behind the ears and one on the forehead. These sensors pick up electrical signals sent by neurons in the brain. The neural data is then sent in real time to the teacher's computer. 
So while students are solving math problems, a teacher can quickly find out who's paying attention and who's not. A report is then generated that shows how well the class was paying attention. It even details each student's concentration level at 10-minute intervals. It's then sent to a chat group for parents. The reports are detailed, but whether these devices really work and what they exactly measure isn't as clear. We were curious if the headbands could actually measure concentration, so one of our reporters tried on the device. Did you get it? What am I saying? I am saying that you put this headband for on top of this cage, you can straight away measure what the students are learning real time. That is what is happening inside the classrooms in China. And they know which student is smart, what is that they're looking at, where are they, everything is captured. This is a new technology with still fairly little research behind it. Theodore Zanto is a neuroscientist at the University of California, San Francisco. He was surprised to learn that this tech, called electroencephalography, also known as EEG, is being used in the classroom on children. It's usually used by doctors in hospitals and labs. EEG is very susceptible to artifacts, and so it... Companies we interviewed said the data can go to government-funded research projects. We spoke to parents who were unclear about where the data ended up, and they didn't seem to care too much. Zanto says there's likely no... Look at the data which is captured. Everything, every facial expression, the movement, everything is captured. That is the extent at which technology is basically driving the business. And coming out, I hope all of you are understanding the depth at which the digitization is happening. I, you are back at the slides. I hope you did you see that the basic video which says that with the brain, the technology is brain computer interactions, BCI, brain computer interaction systems. You can straight away get the data from the brain and that data is used for decision making. That data is basically used for basically judging which is a smart student. That is digital transformation. That is happening. This is happening inside the classrooms in China very much. I, I hope all of you are clear. I know this the, some part of the audio was not very clear. Correct. There was some disconnect. That is what is happening. In Euro marketing, it is used in a big manner. See, right now, it may not be basically these are questions which came up through the chats. I'm basically saying in marketing will change based on how neuro, neuro marketing is the key for the marketing components. Why is it in, you can basically start analyzing it. In fact, you don't even have to put this band now, correct? You go into a shop, they can analyze, they can start analyzing your brains. Up to that extent, technology is making its own inroads. Okay, listen, since I basically, any questions, I'm just moving on. I'm basically cutting, not cutting short, I'm just taking one more clip to show how is it basically, how is this transform, how, how much is the business basically getting shared by using the technologies? One sec. I'm just using one small clip here. Listen, look at what is happening with respect to digital transformation. One second one. I will look into it. I will explain this. Listen to this. Right now, you are a central point in the raging tornado of change fueled by digitization mobilization, augmentation, disintermediation, automation, well, the list... This is happening everywhere. ...goes on. Science fiction is becoming science fact. Think about self-driving cars or computers that can learn and think. The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it?
This is the only question. As faculties, are we driving the change or are we driven by it? Correct? See, I am saying, you, know, you look at the digital transformation courses or AI in business, the difference between Stanford, Berkeley and the one we are sitting here, etc. is not too much. Correct? Are we driving the change? Can you induce that? There are enough open-ended courses. Look at Gerard, this futurist. He himself has a good set of themes. That is the business world which you are entering in. Disruption has become the new normal. With change, it's always gradually, then suddenly, well, things really have stopped happening gradually. This change is exponential. Everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent. Cars, cities, ports, farms, even our bodies will be wired with sensors and will talk to each other. These game changers are also combinatorial. They amplify each other, creating a perfect storm of change. Quantum computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human-only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating but not at being. Yes, robots and software will do some of our work, but this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be, not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. We need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights and wisdom. Technology represents the how of change, but humans represent the why. The future is about holistic business model. The opportunity is to be liquid, to learn just in time, not just in case, not single improvements, but complete transformations, not individual systems, but new ecosystems. Humanity is where true and lasting value is created. We will engage, relate, and buy things because of the experiences they provide, because of their transformative power. The future doesn't just happen, the future gets happened. The new way to work is to embrace technology, but not to become it. The future is in technology, yet the bigger future lies in transcending it. Let's live and lead yeah, from it. How, how fast can we adapt this technology into our curriculum is the key for the success of the business and the business. Okay, listen, what am I saying? I am saying about the importance of digital transformations. We looked at some one simple examples of a classroom. In a classroom, how kids are wearing artificial, the brain computer interactions devices and then basically looking into it. The next thing which I basically have to say is about the technology cost. Look at the technology cost curve. Can you see this? The cost of computing is coming down exponentially. Correct? More computing is improving. Storage is improving. 50 percentage every 18 months. Digital imaging. Look at the quality of the images which our fonts are capturing. Almost 59 percentage year after year. Networking capabilities, lithium ion battery price. If, if you look into all this cost, the, all this cost is coming. Why is artificial intelligence playing a major role? Simply because the power of computing and the cost of computing is coming down. I hope you can see me. The cost of computing is coming down. Data are more collected. Cost is coming down. You can collect this data, create intelligence. And this intelligence is the key for the success of the business. Again, to explain the same point, look, and what is it basically doing? This exponential productivity. Life expectancy more than double. And the point is not visible. Professor. Oh, yeah, this is not visible. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. I am oh. changing between. Sorry. Okay, one second. I am changing between this video format. Can you see it now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, one second. Sorry. 
can, can you see that? This is the slide. I was basically saying about the technology cost curve. And now you see, because technology cost curve is basically showing the technology cost is coming down. And because of that, I see 30,000 times faster since 1960. I, I hope you understood. Integrated circuits are so fast. Solar panels, 250 times cheaper than 1975. DNA sequencing, one lakh times cheaper. That means put your money in infotech, biotech, nanotech, it will see exponential growth. This is not what I am saying. The entire business world is saying. I am just giving justification. Look at the price of Tesla, Amazon, Google, correct? You take Indian companies also. And one year back, what was the price? One Now, what is the price? Some, some of the shares are three, four times. What is it showing? They are deciding the future of the business. Okay, listen. All this is basically a combination of outputs from various consulting firms. This again, I have taken it from Deloitte. Look at this. What is happening? Can you see? This is time rate of change. One second. I'm just, uh, oh, sorry. Can you see the PowerPoint? Can you see the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. One second. Okay, can you see? See, this is the time, this is the rate of change. Technology is changing at this rate. Business productivity is just gradual. And there is a huge gap. Who is able to fill this gap is a winner. Can you see? The one who is able to fill this gap is the winner. <coughs> Correct. I'm just explaining that. How can you use this? This is where the artificial intelligence, big data, this is where transformation is coming. And the universities which can fill these gaps. And what is the major concern is also this. Can you see the technology is changing at this rate? Individuals are ready to absorb these technologies. Look at your, see, most of your parents will be using WhatsApp. But how many businesses are using the latest emerging technologies? They are much lower. This is taken from Deloitte. Can you see this? The business is not capturing this. Individuals are using the technologies. Where is the government? They will say make in India, digital India. Very few governments have come up with public policies which will address this gap. If as an individual you close this gap, you are winning. Business who close this gap is a winner. The governments, there are state governments, Dubai, the Sefrata, United Arab Emirates, Singapore, Lithuania, Estonia, all these are countries which are using the best of the infrastructure and technologies which is able to close this system. Yeah. And that is winning. Again, I hope you understood. And this, this is what the major problem in business is. Technology is rising at these levels. The business is not ready to do it, accept it. And the business is trying their best right now. I will come to this. I will move on. And from here onwards, I'm going a little more deeper into the subjects. The technology adoption has curved. The price is dipping. The adoption rate is exponentially improving. This is for a color TV. This applies for your home bandwidth, the TVs, any product, digital products. This is how the graph will look like. Exponential S curve. What is it saying? It says that as the price dips, the absorption rate basically improves. This I've drawn it for different products. So you, this is basically taken from BlackRock, correct? They basically have shown this. Let's say, for example, if you have basically taken telephone, etc., they have taken 75 years to reach this 50 million users. Whereas you see the latest products which take just 50 million users Geo took less than something like 60, 70 days. Some of the apps, which is Arogya Setu app, basically took just a few days to reach the 50 million users. All of them are reaching this in a very short span of time. That is what I have to say. I hope all of you are with me, correct? And in short, 
digital disruption is real we have to expect a smack in our face if we are not basically prepared to take on that is what it says and th- i'm just cutting short some of them look look at it world largest company taxi company they uber has no taxes airbnb no real estate oh yeah no absolutely no skype no telecom infrastructure facebook no contact facebook may have some clips about, so they may, they are offline creating some of them but look at netflix largest movie house they own very few movies even apple google also society one the fastest growing bank no actual money look look at blockchain and cryptocurrencies how it is going to transform that means digital disruption is not, not something which is hypothetical this is happening in this, this digital transformation is happening in real life day to day and be prepared to take on this and be prepared to take this bet again look look at look at those examples largest media company alibaba no inventory alibaba has no inventory zero inventory look at this this is what is happening to make the interface better i'm just moving on i hope you understood in fact this is a thesis every company is a software company look at this every company is acting has to act like a software company jp morgan is you know it's a financial institution the number of programmers in jp morgan is much higher than i won't say higher than google right now but at one stage it was higher than number of programmers in google that shows even if it is a bank or a financial institutions you need programmers to program that is the extent at which technology is driving the business uh, okay listen I, i i'm not doing it fast i hope all of you are with me look at the, this this is basically taken from bcg correct the most the 50 most innovative companies of 2020 1 to 10 rank you can see that apple alphabet amazon microsoft samsung huawei yeah you, you look at alipay every most of them digital almost everyone look at the second ranks tesla cisco all of them are dipping in facts if you if walmart is not considering them as a digital company the walmart cannot survive i'm saying are you with me that is the extent i i i'm yeah what the, the next book which i'm basically saying is about this innovative platforms and this digital transformations that is what you should bet on are you with me look, look at mi look look at what they are doing where is philips where is mi mi came just a few years back where is philips years back i doubt whether philips will survive the next wave mi is making products which is almost touching almost every end area of philips that is the extent oh, oh, i hope you understood these are the innovative companies look at this diagram and understand how many of them will survive i will move on to this the next generation stories are you with me correct we are almost at the halfway stage i will just move on i will wait for this last half an hour or something like 30 40 minutes for taking on this questions look this is a strong wave and this wave very few companies will survive new age platforms are digitizing their entire ecosystems look at ola driver city is everything new age platforms large jobs that is driving uber ola transforming everything look at the job market practo only 5000 employees 10000 hospital 2 lakh doctors on practo it's an online portal look at uber 6500 employees 1.5 million cars look at ola look at paytm the biggest listing in the history of india they may start listing after few months look at flipkart that is what i'm saying huge market size by transformation transformation using ai using big data using the power of cloud 
not just not just in very sectors i'm just taking some examples to describe this look at the electric theme electric cars the efficiency of an internal combustion engine is something like more than 20 or 30 percentage not more than 30 percentage in energy efficiency look at an electric motor 90-95 percentage efficiency five times at least four five times far efficient than a petrol car or a diesel car 10 times cheaper 10 times cheaper than the petrol price you see the price 100 rupees much cheaper number of moving parts in a normal car if it is 2000 2500 moving parts in some of the tesla some of the tesla cars it is only 25 moving parts less moving parts less maintenance zero maintenance that is why this electric cars the electric vehicles look at the the indian stock market or anything which is on electric tata solar tata you look at those companies are exponentially look at the p look at the price per the earning multiples you will see their valuations at that range that is what is happening in business that is transformations i'm just cutting short okay look at this uh, some of the slides i can't basically share i want you to know this this is this is not created by franky diana one individual student basically did this correct and this is basically quoted franky diana is her name i have not put her name here look at it there are five can you see this blue color here i am putting the cursor here smack social mobile smack i will say social mobile analytical cloud s m a c that's the base for everything correct that is the blue color can you see this part that is coming up with lot of new generation technology 3d printing cognitive nano blockchain this is the innovation accelerators and because of this you see lot of futuristic scenarios smart homes artificial narrow intelligence connected healthcare sharing economy all this is basically out of that and what is it basically showing it is coming up with lot of futuristic possible solutions or the problem falling of working age population population changing notation of work lot of things technological unemployment aging populations energy demand all this is what is happening what am i saying the technologies which is fragrant smack social media mobile technologies big data analytics cloud computing is giving generation to set of other technologies like drones blockchain robotics etc the green color which is indirectly triggering a major change in the business world and daily life everything has to be rerouted and this is all we are in 2020 2021 we are at that right stage to make this change happen and a lot of research has to be done in this area nothing there i have my doctoral students you say any of this area no work done that is what is happening yeah if there are any questions i'll be happy to take it this is a digital revolution so i'm just putting some more foundations on what i have to say what is the base for this i've just taken from some secondary reports and putting it together which i'm making it into a book also and that is why when you have questions you basically interact with me some of them you look at this usually all this revolution say the industrial revolution the fast revolution the just a minute just, professor yeah hello someone raised yeah umesh chandra umesh chandra yes sir okay you, you can put your questions uh, good afternoon sir there is a nice session is going on that's what i don't want to disturb but <laughs> yeah uh, thank you sir umesh chandra from jain university same okay as, sir my question is how this digital transformation will have an impact on emotional intelligence because emotional intelligence is a very fundamental uh, knowledge of the any human being how it will have impact on that how we can improve on that how we can learn from that that's all uh, yeah. some uh, doubt i have yeah Thank one you. second 
yeah listen to this i am just answering this way not very briefly i can be detailed in answering this one see look at the intelligence which is captured right now the intelligence if i have to capture the emotional intelligence or intelligence or get some information from anyone it for a digital systems it is very difficult especially if it is emotional intelligence a day in the near future even the data from the brains is basically real time capture uh, if you basically look into the bci video which i basically showed brain computer interaction systems can straight away the capture the data which is what is happening inside the brain can be captured and the companies can use that for their decision making the emotional intelligence also can be tapped from each one of you if there are say, 80 students who is sitting inside this class i can easily understand what is your emotions to this lecture and where are you looking what are you looking what is the emotions to this can be measured and mapped and i get a dashboard which is by the side which i can use to decide the speed of my class up to that extent the tools will be evolved is it there right now it is just evolving correct uh, say for example which is the company which is making i can be very specific elon musk is having a project which is neural link you can search on this how are, how is neural link working they are basically doing lot of in depth analysis on emotional intelligence bci how intelligence can be used for decision business decision making that is why this companies who is able to do are in trillion dollars valuations look at tesla look at amazon look at google all of them are reaching that 1 trillion 100 billion dollars is their valuations can you imagine why is that they they are able to connect this data convert it into better decisions emotional intelligence also will be captured to certain extent in the greater in the few years down the line did you get what am i saying yes sir i got it thank you very it, much sir. yeah yeah I, I, i am a strong believer what happens in the brain is getting captured you go to china i don't have any solid source to say that you go to china you go through the streets You, everything is captured your facial expressions everything is captured they they get the, your social index score they know about each one of you even if you are a not is not even a chinese national correct even what is happening in their brains also to certain extent in some of the places they are capturing is what uninformed decisions alibaba should be doing it i am not saying that the chinese government definitely is doing it to certain extent alibaba if you are basically putting your cameras on and then searching is searching uh, very difficult to say that will be doing it. amazon will do that why not the government of india may do that looking uh, looking at what am i saying i am not saying about capturing the facial expressions and rating each one of you what is happening inside your brains okay. will the universities do that as a register of examinations i can say i go into a classrooms first 30 minutes i know this is the set of students they will be ranked like this you will have some idea about how these kids behave in the class what questions they put correct real time i need 2 years to judge them and give them a certificates this can be easily happening real time that is the power of tech are you with me yes sir okay, sir good. Uh, yeah. associated question uh, yeah. how ethical is this uh, yeah, the, for, uh, collecting yeah, the I, i hope you yeah how ethical is this yeah because we are like china will customer. do that definitely they will have better decision making if india is uh, not a very ethical if india is not able to capitalize on this one they will be taking decision which is much more lesser impact if decision making has to be good you have to convert data into intelligence if you can straight away take the data from the brain and get the intelligence straight from that their decision making will be much better are they using it for the the negativity of the society it is very bad if it is used for the positive systems very good correct i hope india will be capitalizing it for the best of the good correct that is why any country 
which is not able, the, the technology is so powerful. Correct. If, SFSA, for example, if I, as a university, as a registrar of examination, I started to capture the brains of all the data from the brains of all the students who is sitting in my class and using it for the negativity, it definitely bad. Can I use it to rank the students better? Definitely very easy to do that. With all these online examination systems, each one of us know how corrupt is the system. With the BCI, everything is clean, brain computer. Interactions, interface systems, so clean. I hope you are, I answered this. If you, if there are questions, uh, I can take it to any stage. Yes, I, I will move. Yeah. You. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Listen. Yeah. What am I saying in this one? This one. This is. Uh, this I've just taken it from the digital revolution roadmap. Usually, these industrial revolutions will happen for around 40 to 50 years. The first industrial revolution, the steam, then the you can see the steel, oil, computer revolutions, etc. Information communication, the ICT revolutions, the AI revolution, the industry 4.0. There are different terms which are basically the AI revolution, almost saying about the same things, have just started. 2010 it started, not beyond that at all. Every digitization in every country, basically, digitization happened before that, but the third revolution, the PC revolution's impact into business was very limited. This revolution, right now, people are talking about AI in business in a very strong manner. Correct, blockchains, IoT, et cetera. This is killer. This will last for another 40 years. By the time, Everything will be restructured, guaranteed. There is no, I am, what am I saying? I'm not trying to make you better. I, I You bet on this. You look at the stocks, look at shares, look at companies, look at financial ratios of these companies and see what is happening. Look at the listings which is going to happen in India of Somato, Paytm, etc. Then see their valuations. Look at the valuation of SBI and then compare it. Then you will understand what is real business. Then only you are, we are fit to teach inside the classrooms. Otherwise 30, 40, see, the, look at the subjects which we teach in marketing, finance, HR, operations. I am also teaching 30, 40 percentage. This is not happening in business at all. Where is HR? HR is dead and dying. There is nothing which has to be, <laughs> I feel sorry for the, some of these functions. It is dead, correct, accept that. This is not my thesis, uh, seriously not my thesis. You go read the literature. I strongly feel, sorry, no, th there are many functions in business. Not just look at judiciary, look at legal studies, look at what is the function of a lawyer. Every case, Watson, <laughs> Alexa basically will be solving it. Every case, uh, at one stage, I, I don't want to name this company. You look at IBM Watson. Every case which is there in the judicial system in our country can be solved in half an hour's time is what the IBM or some of these tech companies are basically saying. That is the extent at which technology is ruling. What are we waiting for? Why are we not introducing it? Look at cars which are driving by itself. Why AI transformation? What am I saying? I am simply saying this tech revolutions have just started. Please capitalize on this, correct? I know most of your universities, you may not have the freedom to change the curriculum, correct? Uh, I'm not looking at any financial incentives. I'm saying that please restructure the courses, teach the kids. It is difficult for us teachers to teach the subjects also. When you, you are entering into a territory in which the kids who is playing this game is much better positioned. Yeah. You go into a classroom, say about AI in finance, etc. <laughs> there will be at least 5-10% of the class who is better than you in tech. That is the extent. You have to accept it. It is collaborative learning. Make Give them assignments to work on projects and then come back and present to the class. And the role which we have to play is also something different. Okay, I'm just seeing some chats which are basically come. We will definitely work on it for better academic systems. I can see some of them basically saying that. Okay, one second. Okay.
okay AI is the future, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. One second, the machines are changing. Put your questions up if you have. Okay, listen. Uh, yeah, listen. Uh, we will move on. I hope all of you can see my screens are just changing in between. That is why, okay, listen. Yeah, I'm just taking three eras, 1917, 1967, 2017. You can see this. I don't have to explain. I just want to show the size of these companies. This is 2017. I'm putting the latest figures in the other slide. How big is this companies? You should know, you should bet on this. 1970s, you see steel, telephone, oil. Look at look at this one. It is pre 1970s, it is primarily steel oil companies. 1960s, oil, automobile, one tech company, IBM, you don't know where is, what is the state of the IBM right now? No, not much, not much to say. You look at this, 2017, four of them tech, Bircher, Hathaway is also there, correct? I, I hope you understood what I have to say. It's all tech. That shows 2020, the current top 10, Aramco, leave Aramco, you see the rest of them except uh, this one. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Tencent, Tesla, Alibaba. Eight out of ten. And look at the valuations. Look at this valuation. 2.1 trillion. That, that shows how big is this tech industry. Look at Indian companies. Huh? Look at this. Except uh, this one. Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Tencent, Tesla, Alibaba. Yeah, all of them tech. Eight of them are tech. Except Aramco and Berkshire Hathaway, all of them are tech. What I'm simply saying is that it's a tech world. The business valuation is in terms of tech and they are by miles bigger. And that is why you see the tech stocks price globally is jumping. In India also, you look at, you, you put money any day in, you don't have to put money in TCS, Infosys, Wipro, uh, etc. You look at the second layer of companies, look at their valuations and that shows the business value. Ask the kids to, uh, in my class, I have some thumb rules. I, I don't, say, I make them practice this. Put your money in Naukri, Info it and see what is happening. Look at the valuation, show the justifications. L look at these companies. Look at Reliance. Uh, two days after two days, the results will come. You will see what is Mukesh. I am not saying all these companies are very ethical and all. Here and all, I have a lot of questions. What are they doing in terms of this is 200, 2000, 2010, 2020? Look at these valuations. In fact, one fourth of the valuation, not one fourth, half the valuations of Reliance is accounted in terms of geo and the data which they have collected. Their valuations in O2C and retail is much lesser. Look at TCS. HDFC is all more, more or less like a tech bank. Even HUL also have to restructure. That shows the valuations. 2010, what, how was it? Where is ONGC? Where is Coal India? Look at the price of ONGC, it is still at 150. 10 years back, Reliance was, uh, look at the comparison of the pricing of these companies. Look at Reliance uh, 2000, where is ITC now? ITC is still trading at 120 or two, uh, so, so something like 200 rupees, if I'm not wrong. They have to transform. They have to digitally transform. If they don't transform, they are not in business. As in every business, this is applied. The other companies are doing it. If ITC will this ITC may not be able to sell HUL also, you may not be able to sell with Amazon or Flipkart if they don't have their proper backing. That is the extent at which digitization is happening. That is why these valuations are not going up to certain companies. 
I know I'm saying something which is beyond the scope. If you have questions or counter arguments, I like to take this argument straight on and then defend. Correct? This is the world, the great convergence. This is the age which we are at. Everybody into everything. Banking, insurance, healthcare, retail, mobility, search, analytics, media. One tech company. This is all converging. Can you na name the company which will do this in India? Yeah, I am putting this question back to you. Can you name this company? Can you name few companies which which will basically act as a tech company, which will basically enter into every other sector? A everybody, uh, if you can give me answers, unmute yourself and speak. Then it will be great. Guaranteed. I am saying that you take this as a return, it will basically happen. Some of those companies will basically do that. There are answers which are coming up. Yeah, Tatas will do that. Reliance Industries is the best one to do that. You can see that Tatas is doing it. Tatas is silently doing it. Adani is also doing it. Adani is doing it in a little more crude manner. Adani's Reliance, Tatas, good answers coming up. Oh, yeah, very good answers. All those are... <laughs> I doubt whether Vipro will be able to capitalize on, even if they are a tech company, they have to basically do something. Correct? Wait and watch. The game is so, so fluid. The winner will take everything. If Reliance is able to capitalize it, they will decide. The Reliance will decide the future of ITC. That is the extent. Reliance... That is the extent at which the tech is basically wrong. Yeah. If there are questions, I will take it. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, uh, these are reports. Each one of you can basically download this report. Sir. Gartner Top Technology Trends. Gartner's Top Technology Trends for 2021. Internet of behavior, distributed cloud. You, they're basically classified into different themes. And then said this is AI engineering, anywhere operations, anything. Correct? That's that is hyper automation. These are these are the terms which we should teach. Uh, it's a must for each one of us to basically go to Gartner, Deloitte, BCG, download their futuristic reports, World Economic Forum reports understand what they say, introduce that into our curriculum. If we, we can, I know it is challenging. If we, of course, if you're from some of this uh, private sector, universities, etc., the challenges are much, much higher. You have to adapt towards that. That is winning. Correct. Listen, mm -hmm. look at this one. Less than, uh, this is SAP. SAP is one of the ERP vendor. Correct. Less than one percentage of data in business is analyzed and turned into benefits. I repeat, that means 99 percentage of the data which is captured is sitting in their warehouse and in the cloud, which is not analyzed and used for business decision making. Look at what will be the productivity of the business if this 99 percentage of the data can be capitalized. I don't have to say this. I hope all of you can imagine that. That is why you look at Coursera, edX, etc. All these online educational platforms, 60-70% of the registration happens in data science, AI, big data, cloud, all these associated areas. If it is good, traditional, they are not saying marketing 50 subjects, 100 credits for MBA, nothing like that. What is it? All those models is dead. And dying. I'm simply, I'm flat to say this. Even if I'm holding some, correct, that's the world. There is nothing. This has, all those functions have to be rewritten. The future is no longer an extension. Look at, look at this. It is not about digital. It is about business. Look at corporate strategies. Digital strategy was a part. Now it's a digital world. The company strategy has to be embedded into it. That is what it says. Digital from the sidelines to the core. That if you can make that, you have done. You have done. Uh, this is World Economic Forum job report. Is there? What are the skills which the kids should know? Critical thinking, complex problem. Uh, anything which we cannot digitize is of, of great demand. 
creativity, people management, emo you, I, I can see the professor from him, I think he is from Jain University, he's been asking emotional intelligence. You, you, you float a course, how, yeah, this are, these are subjects. Uh, what am I saying? This will be the last generations in which, what do you mean by offline? We will be the, everything will be online. Everything, never offline, everything online. We will be the last generation which we will talk about offline. Otherwise, I hope you understood what I'm saying. The chair which I'm sitting, the furniture which is there at the back, the fans, everybody knows what is the IoT, what is the RPM, when it has to be given for service, what is the rating, am I happy with the fan? In real time, the, the, the fan, the Havels will know whether I am happy with the fan, etc. Is it talking? This won't take much time. Okay, listen. Uh, I hope you understood whatever I've been basically saying. This, uh, uh, look, look at the futuristic scenarios. I'm just coming to the close of my lecture after that. Look at every company is basically like this. Say fan companies, Bajaj Electric, LZ, a set of companies which is there. Watch, Titan, Shopper Stop, Shopping, Tire, Jacket Tire, Apollo, MRF. Everything is basically focused on some companies. Say fast food, Nestle, Britannia. Similarly, Samsung for this one, Sira. You see the different companies which is there. Now this restructuring is happening. Amazon, Flipkart into almost everything. Look at why. You see Netflix, media, another set of companies. Big Basket, another set of companies. Baiju's, another set. This company is deciding and entering into every other sector. And this restructuring, this transformation is going to kill some of the big companies like ITC. If Flipkart and Big Basket is not ready to take products from ITC's retail products, you know, the biscuits, etc., they cannot, Sunfish cannot be sold. They decide. That is the extent. HUL. That is why these valuations are like that also. This is not rocket science. I've done enough in-depth analysis. That's a business world which you are in. To connect the producer with the consumer, they run the show. They get enough compensation. The OYOs, the OLAs, the Ubers are basically doing that. I'm not going very deep into it. This is the traditional business. Software as a service, traditional buyer-seller platform business. Now you see multi-sided platforms, many sellers, many buyers, one hub with the blockchain yeah. on, you know, I'm, this is not my blockchain. Yeah. Yeah. If you can unmute yourself, great. Huh? The, all of them will basically rewrite. This is coming in my next book, which I'm basically writing. This linear pipe to the triangular platform. Raw material. This is our traditional business model. Raw material, production, assembly, distribution. What is going to happen? Producer, consumer, there is a platform, elements of exchange values. Geo will do that. Tata's will do that. Amazon is doing that. Flipkart is doing that. Alibaba is doing this. And our Unibuy Juice is also doing that. You know, cities also will have to do that. Alliance also is doing that. If we are able to do that one step ahead than the others in the market, we will sit on top of the others. That is the business world. That is the platform game. And this is very difficult for the business world to understand. Very difficult for, for, for a university or a faculties to even understand this platform game. Okay, listen, I hope you understood. This is the producer. My content, I can put it, I can basically make sure that the consumers are basically doing that, which I'm also doing it. Okay, the platform, you, I hope all of you understood this. Platform is YouTube. Viewers are the consumers. Content creators, they get rewarded. Amazon buyer, seller, Uber, passenger, driver. This is virtually happening everywhere. That is the business game. Who can exploit, who can integrate it with multiple platforms? YouTube can interconnect it with the passengers. Amazon is able to do it with passengers. Uber's Airbnb is able to do it with Airbnb. That is the game. These are different types of platform model. Platform is a big business. This traditional business model didn't die. 
you are entering into a world where everything is interconnected correct i am saying that this is the shared economy on demand right now it is not more than 10 to 15 percentage it is another four years 50 percentage 50 50 on demand stuff media streaming no permanent job shared mobility doctors on demand peered crowd funding all this is virtually going to happen correct in fact make one sell one asset builder service provider technology creator network orchestration in fact i'm just not finished with it to basically manage all the infrastructure the applications the data the storage etc infrastructure as a service you manage only the application data runtime this is managed by the vendor the server the storage etc platform as a service you are managing only the application and the data the rest is managed by the vendor amazon web services google cloud and this is managed by the vendor basically the software as a service everything is basically given as a service service there are different formats in fact in fact there is a huge digital divide there is a divide between the asset builders you see sectors like industries hospitals hotels etc one time one x they are that is what is a consultant finance service insurance to in fact it is not multi you technology you create software companies biotech pharmaceutical three four times four x is the revenues in fact in terms of network orchestrations anyone who can create network platforms if alliance is able to create a network in which i can bring all the students all the teachers learn that's a business right that is network orchestration the universities which is able to do that will be a winner this is the basic traditional platforms and how it is based basically going to change i have taken some examples of some players uh, correct you can see that some of them are only into ict some of them are look at this companies put your money in this companies bosch cement they are listed even in india foresters look at what this research companies are do, analyzing it I, i'm just coming to the end of it look at this are nine themes on the revolutions massive migration which is because of this crisis rewriting china country as a platforms remember the country itself is acting on a platform covid is accelerating everything embedded finance the rise of platforms this is all happening okay let's uh, i'm just moving on i'm saying about the boundaries which is happening look at movie distribution pre prepared food delivery grocery retail all of them are trying to integrate between each other this is the business model this is transformation this is ai walmart is basically going into this same look at indian company somato yeah everybody is into this real reliance wait for two more days reliance will be in the agm happening by thursday you will see put your money in reliance before that and sell it after that that's the way they are capture data reengineering they are receiving the data storing it analyzing predicting and deciding how what ai is basically going to be the game changer for transformations correct i i i will take this question this is the blockchain is also a major part of this one look at blockchain the companies which are using blockchain banking finance everybody supply chain healthcare huge siemens real estate everybody travels which are using blockchain these are companies which are using presently blockchain blockchain is also a technological infrastructure which is using the power of ai and making digital transformation happen what am i saying we are here our goal is to reach reach your create a digital road map and for that each one of you take your time what is that we should do and take it towards that if you can do that wonderful job we are doing a good job to the teachers and to the students correct seriously
I strongly feel when we put this much of efforts to teach our kids what we feel is the the business world heading to or the engineering world or the law schools or whichever schools you are associated with, teach them that, then they will capitalize it. You, they, you don't have to do them, they will get the placements. I have, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I said initially in the industry and the last 10 years of teaching of 10 to 15 years of teaching at Alliance itself, I've seen, I've never seen a single kid who did believe in the transformation principles have not succeeded. They, they have to believe in this. We have to trigger that. They will believe that. They will take it forward. They will take it forward. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to basically look, get, you should know this, how to capitalize on this. If you can do that, you have done a wonderful job. I, I, I am correct. It is easy to create some syllabus, teach them one after the other, create one platform for each of the students to come in and log in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm open for questions. You, if you can ask me questions, it will be great. Yeah, you put your questions up. I I kept it very short, simply for you to basically make sure the questions are coming up. I hope all hello, of you sir? understand. Yeah. Am I hello, sir? Am I audible? Yeah, I can hear you, ma'am. Sir, uh, so after listening, it was a wonderful session. I must really appreciate the kind of insights that you have shared. Uh, I just wanted to know this thing. Uh, like I uh, wrote this thing that we are very skeptical on the grounds that the way digitalization is increasing, there's a lot of uh, chances of losing a lot of, of employment opportunities. And apart from that, data could be something which, uh, you know, even I believe that we can be afraid of the how your data can be used by somebody. That is something we can be afraid of. Do you believe yeah. that uh, yeah. when it comes to this spiritual content when it comes to uh, verses of uh, Bhagavad Gita something these things should be incorporated in the syllabus or maybe certain workshops should be uh, arranged for these students and with the coming uh, you know, uh, technical and management education what is yeah. your view on to that okay okay good uh, I will answer then can you mute yourself ma'am because there is a lot of echo okay once again uh, what she is, I didn't get her, her name. Yeah, what she is basically saying that you see a lot of data is basically uh, before that. Uh, don't leave this. Uh, this question and answer sessions will be pretty useful. We have only few 20 25 minutes. We will make sure we will, I will optimize the questions also so that you, each one of you, the way in which the data is collected, she is basically saying that she is also afraid about what these companies will do. Definitely a problem. How will we avoid this one? The rules are basically data protection rules are coming up, but is that good enough for a country like India to implement this and get the best out of it? We will have to wait for a few more years. Definitely a problem. If I say, for example, uh, I am giving my own examples for you to basically, if uh, I have uh, Alexa's in my house, if I am criticizing anything against the government, I, I will make sure I will switch off the Alexa and then speak. Why am I doing that? If I am saying anything against the government, I am putting off my Alexa. Simply because I don't want them to capture what I am saying. That the I, 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 am I, say, I am not saying that they are basically capturing this and using that for decision making. Why can't they do that? They can easily do that. Income tax department can send me a notice saying that, oh, yeah, whatever is it, they can easily do that. This is seriously a problem. Yeah, I hope you understood the, the question. Yes, is, is, is that a question? Is that the, the data protection rules are coming up? But I'm not. I'm making it very brief. I want the others to ask me questions. I, I have seen a set of questions which is popping up. Yeah, listen. Uh, sir, no, hello. Yeah. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, I can hear you, ma'am. 
सर आई एम डॉक्टर प्रियमी थैंक यू वेरी मच मैथ्यू सर आई हैव लिसन टू योर सेशन फ्रॉम थ्री ओ क्लॉक इट वॉज वेरी नाइस सर द्लिच वी द एकेडमिशन फेसिस हियर इज वेन एवर वी ट्राई चेंजिंग एनी थिंग इन दिलेबस समटाइम्स इट गेट्स अप्रूव समटाइम्स इट डज नॉट गेट अप्रूव सो जस्ट रिक्वेस्टिंग और यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ ऑल द एकेडमिशन कैन यू सजेस्ट सम मोर सर्टिफिकेशन on our own where we can uh, improvise on it and uh, then later take it to it uh, sir because uh, i will not name the company uh, there are companies in the market which they don't allow academicians uh, to participate in their recruitment process the moment they see their uh, they are the acad admissions uh, they are the doctorates uh, they don't even treat us for that level but uh, we are far ahead of them so can you give us uh, some tips on that a uh, basically from an industry perspective because yeah. the industry people can come to academics or guest lectures workshop but in return but when the academicians wants to go to the industry there are certain uh, rules set where they don't even allow the academicians to be a part of it yeah this is this is a big problem i you know i, I, I am not going to give up see, the, the answers are very difficult in fact the, the we can bring people from the industry will they be successful inside the classroom is another question the that is also a big question mark hello yeah i i can hear but what can we do to avoid this gap i will give you answers for this one look at uh, look at uh, uh, one second i don't want to name any particular uh, uh, university for that look at the coursera edx udemy all these online platforms irrespective of which one of them look at digital ai ai for everyone is a course i am just taking one example huh? andrew mg's public course which is there in coursera correct similarly ai if you look at simply learn correct each how many courses are there in ai for business ai is a public courses ask your students to make sure before starting the program finish this course and come into the class they will go to youtube enough materials are there i am simply saying that this materials acts as a big platform for students to learn go to aws amazon web services or google cloud platforms gcp there is enough materials in google itself which uh, youtube videos itself which is allowing the students to learn Uh, yeah, will the students learn we have to trigger that that see it is easy for us faculty to say that but unless we make sure they go read and come back and measure that very difficult correct these are courses these are materials which we can ask them and we can also basically th there are training centers for say for example toyota is having it aws is doing it ibm is doing that for the faculties they want the faculties to go to their centers sit there we are basically tied up say i'm not I'm, I'm not speaking officially for the university i'm saying that this happens they, they are serious in doing that once we know that we can go back unless a faculty who is not having that industry experience can't even think about this and that means that the faculty have to get that industry experience first and then only they will say about the aws amazon web services inside a classroom what is ibm watson why is ibm watson that he has to basically know that for that the university should encourage them to basically spend some at least 2 3 months inside this campuses of aws amazon so the the companies most of these companies are doing that say for example i know personally i every week at least one or two vendors basically come and have this interactions a lot of them are basically looking this as a money they are looking this to capitalize this simply because they feel that this is the best time for them to catch on a lot of them are rubbish and the bigger companies they are serious in doing this business which which i feel and i am saying that enough material is there online also which is freely available coursera edureka etc simply learn enough material udemy you are, you don't have to pay anything most of them are free if you have to pay also, also there are many sources in which the students know how to bypass or you can easily bypass you have to pay only 300 400 rupees max to pay the for this courses yeah 
did i answer i hope i have answered yeah if we can put the questions loud i will be happy to answer this yeah yes brother just a minute uh, there are there are some questions in yeah correct yeah yeah one second i'm just going through that if anyone can read out it will be great i will take it one after the other yes yes what, sir yeah what are the opportunities for the commerce students in a digital power transformation yeah every function in commerce will have to be transformed there will be nobody who is sitting with the accounts uh, ledger balancing trial balancing all that will be over correct with blockchain so on every functions that means he has to fintech is the subject correct every functions in commerce will have to be rewritten and imagine you have to prepare for that well, how do you prepare for it take some simple courses in digital transformation there is a course in bcg boston consulting group in coursera with one of the universities simple course, simple course anybody can take it and that course gives a good exposure to how the business world is right now the future of the business world enough courses are there i am i'm not promoting it i have a web portal which i basically interface with the students etc we i go through that itself it gives a good, good idea in yeah, question uh, uh, yeah uh, okay good feedback uh, yeah feedback link for day two regards okay y any other questions yeah uh, sir one more question from punit kumar ah uh, how medium and small scale organizations can plan for the adoption of artificial intelligence for their future survival yeah correct medium and small scale organizations have to say for example say for example Uh, the pandemic time cloud computing blockchain artificial intelligence are all major technologies you don't have to you see what is that we have to do ask our students to go to a small scale industry or a medium scale industries understand the business problems they won't be easily able to understand it you should guide them they will understand this problem then look at what are the feasible solutions amazon is having cloud solutions tell this come students to understand this go back to the vendor and then show about this product amazon cloud services i am not showing the screens then say that this is you can easily digitize most of the functions in your small scale industries using the aws workstations ask them to do that implement that come back they will be picked by that company i have never seen a single students who have come back without a job if they have done this much how is it you should know aws aws is amazon web services they have various services with this services they can digitize the various functions in small and medium scale operations that is what they should do that is it is there any questions if there are questions you can ask okay one second if it if you, if you about the kind of revenue change and how sudden shift will going to impact on students i think we need to bring change from growth yeah grassroots level please talk on this yeah this changes which you have to see if you have to bring this changes into an academic systems correct it is not very easy correct i am i am simply saying that it is not very easy correct you have to get the buy in from the top management the top management first understand that if the top management is easily conceived then it is much more easy can you see whether the students will adapt towards it guaranteed it is adapted it is see i am not criticizing any one of us it is for us to introduce this into the classrooms they will accept it they will you start you take a traditional course in supply chain management i have done this in my courses itself removed my traditional course in management information systems and replaced with emerging digital transformation in business straight away absolutely nothing which is interconnected very little the way at which the students will accept is much higher 
the, we don't have to the students acceptance is guaranteed only thing is that make them do the work this is not this is not like you can say, go there and lecture and come back i can't do this lecture what i've done it inside a digital transformation class i should be hands on doing something in aws creating a workspace creating then it begins, makes then only i can run okay Uh, nice to hear your comments yeah any questions you can put it across if you have few more minutes if you have questions politicians are already following our post on social media using text analytics yes dr modi very true politicians are doing it at the biggest level us government us did this the indian governments the chinese government everybody is doing politicians are doing it business is also doing it. and they are capitalizing on it if the business is not doing it they can't run politicians cannot survive i i am not saying political parties i know the projects which some of my students have done with some of this political national political parties and what are they doing seriously i know i am guiding the students and they sign and no nda with this companies huh? this uh, political and the, uh, some of these parties uh, irrespective of uh, why why should i i am saying whether it is bjp or congress or, or whether it is mamadas parties they are doing it everybody is doing it everybody wants everybody knows this is the ball game every party does that most of the parties does that uh, depending upon the how much money they have they basically doing it you know public reports have come out of this and is one who a... can capitalize this is better okay is there any questions from audience thank you professor yeah thank you so much thank you very much uh, for your informative session on uh, especially you have explained the importance implication and the inevitableness of uh, artificial intelligence to digital transformation mm-hmm. now i call upon professor usha to give a word of thanks uh, to professor good evening everyone i deem it a great honor and privilege to propose a word of thanks first of all i would like to thank eminent speaker dr sajan mathew professor alliance business academy bangalore this session is meant to disseminate the knowledge in the area of artificial intelligence and data transformation thank you sir for the interesting and highly informative session thank you session thank you thank you ma'am i also thank all the participants for your cooperation in making this program a resounding success Thank you one and all thank you. Thank you. So-